Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Awaken the World Live. And I know it says Wednesday on there. I've been confused about what day it is all, all day long. <laughs> it is Tuesday. It is the 5th of January in 2021, if you're here on Earth. And tonight, the topic, of course, is choosing or choice. Hello, hello, hello. So I, I am so sorry. <laughs> I mean, I'm so focused on Wednesday being the day that uh, my teeth get dealt with that I've wandered around all day today thinking it was Wednesday, even though that would have mean, meant I would have missed my appointment. And uh, yeah, and, and I've had a thousand things on the go. I'm, I'm, uh, I actually finished designing a, the 3D printable components for a Arduino-driven automated uh, photogrammetry uh, scanner that'll that'll give me very precise 3D scanning capability. So yeah, it's been kind of fun, and uh, I got a lot of other things on the go right now, and a lot of people that I have to deal with, and um, that's okay. But if you're not careful, you can kind of lose track of the days. And and I keep saying to Kelly, I don't understand boredom. I I just don't see the opportunity in the day to be bored. There's always something that can be dealt with, and there's always that time you need for yourself as well, that quiet inner inner time, the time to turn inwards and be with yourself. So first of all, uh, you know, again, my sincere apologies with the whole days sort of deal. Um, I, I do want to say, though, how much I love each and every last one of you. That no matter what's going on in your life right now, it is perfect in the opportunity that it's offering you. And the opportunity it's offering you is to choose. To choose for yourself. Because you can't choose for anybody else. That violates free will. And the universe will have nothing of that. You choose literally, as far as the universe is concerned, in a vacuum. God doesn't look and see what anyone else is doing around you, isn't concerned about any of that. Creation is only looking upon you. What do you choose? Now, we need to take a good look at this because, you know, from one point of view, and keep in mind everything is a point of view, you know, as I said, someone today, as I handed over a copy of uh, Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth, I, I find that book is a good start for people to get an introduction to their own egoic sense of self. If they're open enough to begin to recognize the patterns, and then I kind of, you know, take it from there when they digested the book and help guide them forward. But I was speaking to them today, and... I, I, I basically let them know that their entire existence is about the choices or are about the choices that they choose. And we are making those choices from levels of consciousness. So, of course, when you were young and you were, you know, uh, grounded and in your, and I actually did this, you know, we lived in the, uh, on the sixth floor of an apartment building. And I was, my mother had grounded me. I was uh, a little less than 12 years old. I was about 11 or so. And I wasn't allowed out of the apartment. And the choice I made was to take my uh, nice long rappel rope because I loved rappelling down cliffs and my mother had no idea. She didn't really understand what rappelling was. She thought I was using the rope to make like a tree fort. But no, I was tying it off uh, around trees and then rappelling down cliffs and larger and larger cliffs. So I simply chose to rappel out the window of my bedroom, the six floors, down the side of the concrete apartment building. Well, you can imagine 
the uh, the response that uh, the people who saw this um, had, uh, you, you know, and and that was my choice. But the point was is that choice was made at a certain level of consciousness, right? Now, one of the things we always do is we look backwards from our higher level of consciousness that we're at right now and we perceive ourselves and we forget that it's not even it wasn't even us it was somebody else literally but we look back at our history and we perceive a time where our level of consciousness led to choices that we perceive maybe now as being not supportive in some way or as bad we judge our choices and we judge ourselves in our choices automatically. And it's not fair to do to yourself. The consciousness you had then, the point of view you had then is different than the point of view you have now. The experience of that being is not the experience that this being possesses right now. Now, of course, we're talking about choice sort of in a vacuum, if, if you will. Because what I'm really saying right now is it's always up to you to choose, which is true. You're the only one who can choose. You choose how you feel. No one else can make you feel anything. You choose to feel it one way or the other. You buy into the thoughts that you create about what the person has said. And then your body responds with feelings trying to lead you out of it and tell you that you're, you're selling yourself a harmful line. A lot of times we're too busy with those thoughts. We're not paying attention to those feelings trying to warn us that our thoughts are way off base and doing us harm. The point is, is that we choose. Now, of course, there's... A bunch of things that get in the way of free will. Because arguably, you can't really demonstrate freedom of choice fully if you're afraid. If you're afraid, you have chosen one way or another to create boundaries or a prison limiting your own freedom of choice. Where are all these boundaries to our free will? Where, where do they exist? They don't exist outside of ourselves. They exist as mental projection in the egoic sense of self, within the mind, within the thought. The idea that somehow at any minute your choice is limited. It's not. You could choose, if you were to be so foolish, to go take a very long walk off of a short cliff. And you will find that you're perfectly capable of making that choice. You're not going to like the sudden stop at the bottom. Well, if you get a short enough cliff, maybe. The point being, and, and we're going to talk about the byproduct of choice, which is called consequence or karma, if you will. But really, it's all talking about the same thing. It's energy balancing out. Every choice we make is creative in this universe. It causes a reverberation of creative energy to literally ping off of you in a 360 degree direction, uh, racing off into the cosmos. But as I said, there's a lot of barriers within yourself to freely choosing. Fear being the biggest of those barriers. Guilt being another of those barriers. Fear and guilt are the, the two of the largest barriers that we face. Now there's a whole bunch of reasons why we don't make the choices that we wish to make.
Guilt is the idea that what you were in the past did something that should in some way limit you now or deny you something that you wish for, wish to participate in, wish to experience by making a choice. And yet you hold yourself back from that choice because you feel that some part of you does not deserve that, perhaps. As I said, that wasn't you. And really, you need go no further than pay attention to your body's own reaction to your thoughts. No matter what your choice, no matter what you're thinking about, no matter what choice you're going to make, and a lot of choices are made subconsciously. And they do because a lot of that guilt and fear lies deep within us. And doesn't really stay in the conscious part of the mind all the time. It sits in the background and it basically whispers, I'm afraid, so, and then your conscious mind, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to choose this. Or, I'm guilty, so, quietly being spoken, and then your conscious mind says, so I'm not going to do that. You must be willing to ask yourself at all times, if I was born right now in this very moment and had this experience, and this was my first ever experience, what would my highest choice be right now? And then follow that choice, even if there's fear in the way, even if there's judgment in the way, even if there's guilt in the way. The only way to reclaim your power of being able to choose is to one, to know that only you choose for you. No one else chooses for you. No one else is responsible. This is number two. No one else is responsible for your choices except you. No one is to blame for your choices. Number three, you are not to blame for your choices. However, refer to number two. You are responsible for your choices. Why? Refer to number one. Only you made your choice. This is not a, a chain or a ball and chain or a weight, but it is indeed a set of wings. It is freedom and a restoration of your own power and ability to fly free. At a, any given moment, the universe ecstatically is looking upon you and saying, what do you choose? What is the highest choice that you can imagine right now? Go ahead and choose that and experience it that, and then learn from that and grow from that and evolve from that in your level of consciousness and then choose again. We create through our choices. And there are no bad creations. There are no bad choices. There's just choice and consequence. That consequence is a natural reaction to our choice. And re realistically, it, uh, it's a type of energy balancing. Now, you could argue with me that you made a foolish choice as now you're locked in jail for 40 years. But jail, like the particular meter or rhyming scheme of a poem, still offers choice and freedom within the confines. 
no matter whether your jail is physical or manufactured in your own mind, as most people's are, you are never contained by those walls. It is only if you buy into the illusion of your containment that you can be contained. In other words, you have to choose containment over freedom. Karma or, or, or that reaction to our choices is simply a balancing of energy. Now, when it comes to other people in your life, to judge your choice against someone else's response to your choice, you have to be so very careful. If you do not perceive that that person possesses at least the same level of consciousness that you do, you have to be mindful that chances are they're going to react in some negative fashion to your choice. You know, that creative being, that creative intelligence that is us and manifests us and all things simultaneously doesn't go halfway, didn't partially commit, but instead is fully evolved, fully active, fully aware, fully present. Whatever it is that you choose, if it rings true with you, if it feels good to choose it for you, give yourself to that choice wholeheartedly. But not blindly. Watch for the reverberations of what is starting to return energetically from your choice. And if you feel the need to adjust your choice for yourself, not for another. No matter how much you try to make yourself likable or gain approval, you're only losing yourself and losing your free will. And the only way you truly lose free will is to give it away. Every single thing that's happening to you, everything that's happening to all of us all over the planet is all inviting us to do the same thing, to make higher and higher choices, to observe what is happening, not to judge it, not to become angry, not to become upset with it, not to blame ourselves or blame others, not to wish to destroy it, but to simply understand that in our observation, this, what we're doing right here, right now, no longer serves us. And it looks like it never really did. And then choose a new path. Now, we all sit here and we all say, well, I can't change your world. And the world isn't asking you to change it. The universe is asking you to change yourself. To reach higher and higher levels of being. To watch as your choices become more and more refined. And as the love of who you are and the light that you are begins to shine brighter and by brighter through the choices you make. Others will naturally be drawn to your light like moth to a flame. That is how you affect real change in the world. Ask yourself in any given moment, are my choices working towards the wholeness and oneness of all of us, the unification of us all, or all my, or are my choices separating and taking away? 
you have the power. You are the same being that Christ was, that Buddha was. You have the same strength as Gandhi had. The same vision that Muhammad had. All of this is contained within you. Look for it. It's there. And make your choice to give your gift of love to the world. A world very much in need of it right now. Much love to you this evening. Hopefully there will be some teeth happening in the next few days. And then I have to work, you know, get around how to talk with those, which will be a whole new experience yet again, I'm sure. And uh, as always, namaste. I see that divine spirit within you. Know that you are loved, that you are not hated, that all of creation smiles down upon you, and that you've never left home. It's still here. You're still surrounded by love, still held, always eternal. Have a wonderful night.